right, welcome back to another episode of Live in the Studio. We have a big group with us today, but our guest is Kensley Husband. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Glad to be here. We're very glad Nervous. to have you. Uh, we also have Rebecca Lauren Hello. on again. Um, it's. I feel like it wasn't 100% clear, but Becca is our, is our intern and our audio editor <laughs> here. So it's kind of fun. We kind of have a opportunity to have her, uh, not every time, because obviously we don't overload you, but it, it is <laughs> nice to have you. Um, and then obviously my wife, Shaylin. Shaylin. Hello. Uh, Patterson. Yes. <laughs> because it's Patterson recording. Yes. So basically. <laughs> Co-owners. Kind of goes without saying. Yep. Um, but we are here today to kind of uh, talk to you about your background in music. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start off and just uh, start off with kind of a question and, and say, um, will you introduce yourself? Yeah. And kind of tell people what you do. Absolutely. And also, I'm going to be awkward and move this closer to you. Okay. So Super awkward, can Billy. You. You're Super o- awkward. You're okay. <laughs> um, my name is Kinsley Husband. Um, I've known you guys for a bit, five years now, four yeah, years. Like I've that. known you for like all my life, but we have just <laughs> became close in the last like three years, which yeah. is crazy. Um, but I kind of have grown up around music. My mom is like a choir director. Um, she teaches piano, like all that. So she like was raised around music. I mean, you guys kind of know that, but mm-hmm. was raised around music. Just I've always been singing since I can remember. Like there wasn't ever a time I was like, oh, I started singing at this age. It was just always happening. Now I lead worship at Relevant and am now officially a staff member. Yes, and as so, of like a week ago yeah, or something like ago. that, right? So I'm really excited about that. And it's been amazing. I get to work under Chelsea, who was on last week. Mm-hmm. And... So it's just been amazing and I really enjoy it and I'm grateful to get to do this as a career, which is really cool. Yeah, we're grateful to have you on the team at Relevant and uh, excited to have you here today. I kind of wanted to give people uh, perspective. So when you started trying to play or sing at church, like how old would you have been? Um, so as all musician parents, you kind of get sucked <laughs> into like yeah, that's performing. True. So <laughs> your your dad plays bass. Yeah, he so. plays bass. Um, my f- mom actually had us like do like a mini tour of the song she wrote when I was like eight or something like that. I remember the first time I sang on stage, I think I was six. Did you? And I no. cried. Did you say mini tour? Yeah, like a mini tour. Like yeah, how many tour. shows was in your mini tour? Um, we went, I would want to say like six. She six did. Shows. She wrote, yeah, she wrote like a shoebox song for like Operation Christmas Child. And all these churches like got a hold of it and were like, hey, will you come sing this at our church? So it was really cool. It was fun. We got to stay at, like beach houses and stuff like that. But but you fun. were nervous. Yeah, oh my goodness. I get nervous <laughs> every time. Every time. I still remember like the first time singing on stage, I looked out and I like cried. I was like, crap, there's people. Yeah. <laughs> I was crying. When, when do you feel like your, your parents felt like they realized like that you were, could sing? Like, I mean, six years old is super young. I think my mom like always knew. I think that was actually something she might have prayed about and prayed for. She'll mm. have to check me on that. But I remember she always, like, I remember asking her one time, I was like, will you give me voice lessons? And she was like, Kinsley, I, I already am. You just don't realize it. So, like, every time <laughs> I'd be at, like, the piano, she'd be like, Kinsley, like, flip up in your mix. Like, don't just scream all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a very yeah. Kendra response. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I already have been. I have been. <laughs> That's know? awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's, I think you two are a little more similar in that way, which is that you both have, like, family background mm-hmm. in music. And you as well. Mm-hmm. I always wanted, like, <laughs> you have siblings that play. You have siblings that play. You have siblings that play. Both my sisters, nothing. <laughs> one of them, one of them was a was a art major, like drawing art, mm. but it's not. It doesn't doesn't run in the yeah, family. Yeah, it's in it, and it's like a it's like a thing where like she can draw, I can play. I don't think either of us could do the other. Mm. And so it's a weird. Oh no, thing. you suck at drawing. It's a weird thing to be like both artists, but totally different like as in like i could never fathom i used to ask her to teach me how to draw stuff yeah and she'd be like you're hopeless <laughs> i'm not help- like just give up <laughs> not even yet. Oh, I, um having Hopefully. to do like illustrations i had a i had an art teacher that i i literally told him i wasn't going to take his class unless he promised he wouldn't fail me he was like i promise you won't fail and I, I passed with That's like good. a C. Okay. I made it. <laughs> I was really here to say that he failed you. <laughs> um, he failed me. <laughs> um, so your first gig, you would have been like six to eight. It was a Christmas yeah. song. So when did you actually start trying to like join a team playing? Was that here? Was that irrelevant or was that somewhere else? That was here. I'd always like been singing, like I said, like whenever my mom made me or like bribed me to <laughs> but i remember we came to relevant we left our previous church we'd been there for like 15 years i want to say and i don't think the church people actually know this but i did not want to come to relevant which i mm. think is really funny 
um, now because I work here and I absolutely love it. Um, and it was more just like a pride thing of like not wanting to like leave the people I'd known and everything that was like comfortable. Um, but I got sucked into doing production actually. Mm. And my mom volunteered me on the spot in front of the worship leader that I could do slides and lyrics. And she's like, Kenzie can do it. And I was like, Mom, I was like, why'd you, Mom, why would you do that? And I'm super grateful that she did because then through the process, I started singing with Tristan Marcus mm -hmm. when he was leading worship here. Um, and, and he found out I sang and then it just continued. Yeah. Um, so I really started joining a team here awesome. at Relevant. So, awesome. yeah. Yeah, we uh so so when you said you used the word bribe, what was an example of like a bribe? It's embarrassing. What, what was like a what was a what was a like was that like ice cream? Listen, like you get listen. ice cream after the show? Like what is that I, at that age? Yeah, I kinda had a little bit of a sweet tooth. <laughs> okay. I still do my mom would be like, I'll give you chocolate. <laughs> so I'd be like, chocolate. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> or like it'd be a stuffed animal. Hey, like. if people said, Hey, if you uh, like I mean, I think that's a real thing amongst musicians. Like, if you're like, we'll feed you if you play the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that's that's like a that's a reality. Musicians need to eat, yeah. guys. Yeah, feed your musicians. They're like, we'll have Chick Fil A there. I'm like, bet. Say less. <laughs> Absolutely, lots chicken. Um, we're gonna kind of round robin where the questions come from. So I apologize. So Becca's like Becca's got your next question. I realize like we're gonna have four people. What's the best way to like yeah. facilitate yeah. like all four of us? Round robin. I like that. Um, so when the question goes from me asking to her asking okay. to her, asking, <laughs> okay. try to try to. We'll Can I ask don't question? get dizzy. Yeah. Oh, Do you I have actually, a question? No, I don't have one. <laughs> 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 I don't want to be left out. <laughs> yeah. So as you were saying, like you've grown up around music like your entire life, yeah. but I think you know you're mature enough to realize there's like a difference between a hobby and a calling. Yes. So like, how did that transition happen? Mm. from being just a singer to actually being a worship leader and this being like your full-time ministry? Mm. That's a great question. Um, it started off leading in youth. Pastor Josh, the, one of the uh, pastors here at Relevant, um, asked me and uh, me and my sister actually to help lead worship. And it was still kind of like in that phase of like, oh, it's just singing. Um, and then I went to camp, um, summer camp, and I was like, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? Cause I was kind of like thinking about going through like a, um, I had like kind of tiptoed in like classical musical theater worship styles and wasn't really sure where I wanted to like land. Um, and so I was like praying and I remember at camp the full week, I was like asking the Lord, I was, like, will you please like speak to me clearly? Like, just tell me what I'm supposed to do. Um, and I did not hear a thing the entire week of camp and I was so irritated and it was literally the last 10 minutes of camp. We were literally on, walking out the doors and my friend walked up to me. She's like, Hey, the Lord told me that you're gonna be a worship leader. Um, and I was like, what? The Lord answered my prayer, not my timing, but he did. Um, and I was super grateful. And then just like doors kept like opening and I knew in that moment that that's what I was supposed to do was what I'm going to do. How long ago was that? Uh, let's see. Five years, four years. It was a junior in high school. So you've been doing it for a while. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what is like being a worship leader? What does that mean to you? So in looking over y'all's questions, I was having a hard time <laughs> with this one because I th think it's something I'm currently like learning. Um, and I think we'll always be learning as long as I'm a worship leader. Um, but I think the first thing is like, obviously, yeah, you lead people in worship music, but worship is like so much more than just music. And like I was thinking about it and I was like, I really think leading worship is just saying yes to the Lord and listening. Um, and because you really could lead someone into worship like at Publix mm. or at the grocery store by like shifting their perspective off their situation onto the Lord and start exalting who the Lord is. Like it's not just like, oh, I get on a microphone and I sing because like we're made to worship and we're going to worship something. Um, and so for me, I really do believe it's saying yes to the Lord and listening to the Lord's voice. My, my answer for that has always been like... Um... And that it's like the super, it's like the hyper logical yeah. version of this answer. But it was just like, what's the worship leader? It's like the one who worships first. Yeah. Like that, that mm. was like the way that I've always, mm. like, you just, you just, when people aren't ready to put, like, and I say this because I'm always the person that's like, honestly, when it comes to like being a part of, uh, I guess, the congregation or being within worship specifically, I don't like fall into that easy, yeah. like at all. Yeah. It takes me forever. Yeah. And so I, I just always have a recognition of like, it's literally the people who are able to get to that mm. before I probably could, um, mm. or, or that are just, or when I'm tasked with leading, like the times where I like force myself to yeah. kind of enter into that before I am even comfortable yeah. all the time, you yeah. know? 
Um, so I've always just kind of viewed it as going first. That's actually probably a good question for the round table. What do you think about that? I think, you know, everything that y'all have been saying is, is really, really good. Mm. Um, cause I think I was talking to Chelsea the other day and she was talking about how like, um, you worship on and off stage and being a worship leader really is more like the word leader really isn't in the Bible mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. it's, it's servant. And yeah. so being a leader really isn't about being on stage mm-hmm. and being the center of attention. It's That's about good. fostering the presence of the Lord in a way that people can see that and want more of it. That's good. Right. But I mean, even, you know, like you can do it when you're sitting in the pews, like you don't have to be on stage for it, which is yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. So it's definitely, there's a lot to it and it's yeah. hard to condense it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, conventionally there's a there's certainly like a there's a definition or a look or yeah. or a or a set of responsibilities or whatever, but mm-hmm. it's it's unique because I think especially at relevant, like I think normally when you think of it, you think of like, you know, whoever is basically on staff with that position yeah. or whatever, you know, yeah. and it's like our this the team at relevant anyway is like huge, made yeah. up of people that have all yes. either done it or could like you know, I mean, I think I said we said this either last week or the week before, but I think at least three of the people serving on that team have been the director before mm-hmm. and like they're not mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that in and of itself, I think, is a unique thing. Yeah. What about you, Shay? I think yeah. I'd agree with what you said. I, I didn't always see it that way. I because my dad was a worship pastor in my head. I think growing up, I was like, there's the worship pastor, which is the guy who's on staff who's paid. And then if you're not that, you're a instrumentalist or you're a choir, basically. And that was how I thought about it. And I didn't, mm. I didn't consider myself a worship leader until I joined youth. Mm. And you, that's what, and that's what they <laughs> called it. And yeah, I think it's just being a servant, being a conduit, being an example, I think is what a worship leader is meant to do. Mm. Um, that's good. So to kind of talk about, we know um, that you are kind of approaching songwriting as a newer yes. songwriter for uh, what, maybe like the last year and a half or so now, yeah. something like that. Uh, uh-huh. Like it's the first time uh-huh. I heard about you, like we're trying to write stuff. And yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to ask you how that's going and also just ask you kind of like as a newer songwriter, you know, how are, how are you thinking about that in the context of, of being a worship leader versus a songwriter? Mm-hmm. What's that dynamic look like to you? And then what has kind of been your approach to trying it so far? And mm. also, how's it going? You guys have such great questions. That's great. Um, <laughs> we, we think about them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that's great. Um, so it's been a frustrating process just because it's not something that comes super like naturally to me, but it's something I feel very strongly called to do. And like I believe that's something the Lord's put in my heart to do. Um, and originally I kind of gone about it of like, okay, how can this impact the congregation? Like, how can this like hit the world? Like, how can this just be like the greatest hit of all times? Mm-hmm. Which isn't a awful mentality, but it's not the right one for me. Um, and it kind of needs to start with like, okay, now what's the Lord speaking to me? What do I want to worship the Lord individually, not thinking about anybody else? And I think that's like the epitome of like, things I struggle with is always thinking about like, what's this person going to think? Or what are they going to think about this line? And I have so many wonderful, talented friends. And so I consider you guys sometimes too in writing. Um, and I've, whenever I present it to y'all, I find nothing but grace. But um, yeah, so right now I've been just kind of like forcing myself to sit down and like write something. Mm-hmm. And I have so many voice memos of like starting pieces. I've only like written two songs, mm-hmm. like actually one and a half okay (laughs) one and a half so that's something um i'm really grateful for it um but i'm also grateful for like co-writing and like that kind of stuff which i'm looking forward to doing more of um so right now it's it's a slow process and i think because it doesn't directly affect anybody else at the moment except me Mm -hmm. i procrastinate it (laughs) and so i'm like i don't need to do that right now i have this thing because this effects but it really is something that's important and i want to prioritize musically um so i've heard one of them yeah, uh, yeah. i helped write the bridge on one yeah, of you them did. um now that one is very sort of i would say maybe like um almost like gospel piano driven mm-hmm. right would be mm-hmm. like maybe the way to say that musically like what are the influences that you hope to whether they are there or not yet like what are like some of the th- kind of the styles or sounds you kind of want to bring into stuff as you write like what would be like a just like what makes your heart happy musically and what would you want to incorporate? That's a great question. I love a good jazz chord. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> Add to love sevens. Love a good jazz chord. There you go. Um, not the mistake jazz chords that are actually not jazz chords. <laughs> 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 real ones. Um, what? Yeah, I really. Yeah. I really like like honest worship, and I don't know how you describe that like musically. I understand your question, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure how you did. Like, it's not quite gospel, but it's also not like CCM. Okay. Type of thing. It's like some weird in between mix. What are do you think that that comes? So when you're when you're talking about that and you're listening to other people's music, mm-hmm. um, I really feel like some of what you're saying it's really non-specific to a sound. I think it's just certain songs hit that yeah. and certain songs don't. Yeah, you know, for sure. and it yeah. it literally just boils down to. Yeah. That's Does one it of the feel reasons, authentic or yeah, not? Right. That's one of the reasons we were talking about favorite worship records on Becca's episode. Mm. And I was talking about the Of Dirt and Grace album. Mm. And that whole record, they basically like took those songs and they traveled to the locations that were based on the wow. songs. So like for Oceans, they went to Sea of Galilee. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm like, every recording I think on that record has what you're talking about. Yeah. Of like, how could you not yeah. be in it? from a heart perspective yeah. when you're like literally yeah. like where it happened. Yeah. I mean, so that's, yeah, I for sure know what you're talking about. Yeah. Are there songs in today's sort of like, um, I don't want to say pop culture, but like songs that are, that are out today, uh, in the kind of the worship genre that you feel like have that and do, do any of them come to mind? That's a great question. Um, there's a song by Aaron Moses, I think it's okay. called so good I don't know or always good. always good. He plays <laughs> in Maverick city. Okay um always good and it has like a similar like gospel but it's like not quite gospel but kind of like there's some really cool chords and runs um and so like i would love to write something like that also the song i'm singing today i would really love to write a song like that that's like if i could yeah awestruck if i could write uh, who's that by it's by vu worship v-o-u-s right v-o-u-s worship they're based out of florida um they just released an album which is incredible so go check it out but if I could write a song, it would be that song. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Shay, you're the next question. Oh. What do you feel like has been the biggest hurdle so far for you as like a musician, a songwriter? Mm. There's, been some. <laughs> There's been some hurdles. <laughs> um, I was thinking about this, and I think the biggest one is when I had vocal nodules. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wasn't able to sing for six months. Um, and this happened directly after I felt called to be a worship leader. And I was like, Lord, like what in the world? <laughs> you just called me to do this. Now I can't sing. Um, but it was a time that the Lord really taught me that worship really is so much more than singing and like really is like, no, I'm committed to this calling, whether I can sing or not. Um, and so that was a really big hurdle. I had a lot of people tell me to stop leading at church and to mm. stop singing because I wouldn't have a career. I wouldn't be able to go to we college. We were all worried. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, at the time, you were probably how old? 16? No, I was 17, I think. And I think, yeah. like, for context, like, uh, you guys have been around for long enough that you pretty much were, like, growing up within the church. Yeah, and so absolutely. I would say that you are, um, like, one of the golden children of the church. <laughs> like, everybody was That's like, so don't ruin your voice. Like, take, like, we yeah. all were, like, I know I remember like every time you'd sing from when you start, even when you started to recover, mm-hmm. I remember like not just me, but like a, there was like a universal, like we were like really didn't want you to overdo mm-hmm. it. Uh, it was tough to, to watch even, I think like, I mean, I just can't imagine it. So what, when do you, did they tell you kind of like how that happened? Was that just from singing through the years or? Yeah, I think it happened. So the choir is a part of is like super was super intense, and I think they were having me sing. I was singing like one like eight hours a day as some sometimes because I had just practices like back to back to back, and then voice lessons. And I think it was too much, and like I was being like my voice was being strained. Like I was singing soprano one, y'all. I'm not a soprano. I don't one. know what that <laughs> is either. That's like the highest soprano, like Shaylin's vocal range. Okay. Like highest you can sing. And I was like, why am I up here? I was like, I can hit the note, but it's not, it's not good in the long run. So I think that was like kind of an effect of it. Um, and then like, listen, I really believe the Lord healed me because the exercises I was doing, I was procrastinating those exercises. Mm. And so I really believe that was a miraculous thing. So yeah. it took like, you said like six months or how long do you feel yeah. like it? It was like six months of like not singing. And, but then after it was still like a long process of like getting the strength back even. Cause I remember that it was like so airy for a long time mm-hmm. and it would hurt if I sang too much and then it'd be gone for like two weeks if I sang too much. So it was like a lot of like 
trying to find the right balance. Um, and yeah, we're, we're all good now. I haven't had nice. any issues. So, so super grateful. When you're going through that, you know, you've got six months, you can't sing. Yeah. Um, you were talking about like, you know, worship isn't just singing. Yeah. So what is like a significant other, like, or I guess maybe like a, a deeper dive into like, what's a significant lesson that you felt like was really like a specific moment the Lord taught you something in that? Mm. I think like the main one that stuck out from what I originally said was worship is more than singing. Mm -hmm. But I remember the commitment of like, no, this is what I'm called to do no matter what. Yeah. And I remember how that like changed my perspective of like, maybe I'm not supposed to sing. I'm supposed to just lead a team from guitar or keys or whatever yeah. it is. Like if that's what my future holds. So I think like the lesson is if like whatever the Lord's calling you to, and this sounds like a Christian cliche thing, but like he really will make a way and, and like, he's gonna fulfill the thing he promised. So if he's called you to something, it might not look like you thought it would, but like he's gonna provide that, and I didn't know if I was gonna sing again. I'm super grateful I can. Um, so are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did grateful. that go off in everybody else's head? <laughs> yeah, super grateful. But um, but yeah, I think the biggest lesson is like when the Lord calls you to something, commit to it, hmm. and like His plan is really gonna be fulfilled. You know, whether that would have been me not singing again or singing. Is that is that when you started trying to play guitar? Just curiosity. Um, that's like, when I started seriously trying to play guitar. Like considering it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I had been doing it just like out of like, oh, I should learn this. Um, Pastor Josh encouraged me to just because I didn't really have much experience. Um, I'd borrow him and Summer's guitar every every Sunday. They were so faithful <laughs> every Sunday. I didn't have my own, so grateful. Shout the out breed to them. love. They have a yep. breed love with a neon orange capo. Yep. Yep. I don't know if orange has a neon, but if they do, that capo is it's, it's very orange. bright. Yep. <laughs> And um, I put it on the wrong capos many times. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's kind of funny because you actually probably have. Uh, I have like once or twice, and I don't even think you were hearing this happen. But for a while, Josh was like leading the worship services. Yeah. Did you know that? I think I knew it, but I was yeah, never it was here like for it. a really like random time of like maybe what three to four months. Maybe mm -hmm. he was. Are doing you talking it about for you specifically or no? For he me? did it. He did it like in service yep. a couple times. I yep. feel like actually most of our leadership could manage it oh my goodness yeah if they wanted yeah. to Matt, master matt's Matt a great was vocalist and guitarist mm -hmm. yeah um I remember that so from a just from a singing perspective are there influences like of other singers today that have influenced kind of your sound and what you do yeah honestly i think you guys like all the people around me um have like i think worship leaders who you would call like main stage worship leaders like i think of like natalie grant like lauren daigle and like that kind of stuff like yeah they influence who you are but your community should be the main thing that really influences who you are. Mm. And I'm so grateful that I have such an amazing community. And like your music inspires me to like completely like dive into it, like songwriting and y'all's mm. like your y'all's ambition to just like start a podcast is crazy because that's such an intimidating thing. <laughs> and I'm like applause to you guys. Like oh, that's such a great you. thing. And then like Chelsea, who's like my mentor and sister and friend, all the titles or whatever you want to call it but just like i'm super encouraged by her leadership and her sound um and just like her y'all's constant encouragement her encouragement of like just keep doing it you mm. know so i think y'all have been my inspiration when it comes to okay so one thank you that's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> two two in in like modern culture and other artists like from like whether it be people from bethel or whatever are there artists that you do like kind of frequent and listen to a lot today yeah. I listen a lot to, I kind of get stuck on like the one song thing and yeah. I just like play that one song until I'm like, I'm tired of this. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I definitely get stuck on like Map City. Um, I listen to Natalie Grant a good bit. Uh, she's just, she's a great worship leader. She's great. Um, I listen to Voo Worship, like that kind of stuff. So kind of more of the mainstream artists, um, Brandon Lake that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. Did, have you met him i have yeah I have met him. what was that like it was cool i mean he's just like a typical dude <laughs> like he's a normal person in a nice way <laughs> yeah in a nice way in a nice way just a normal dude i think like uh yeah and so i we were we were at some i think it was a worship night or something mm -hmm. down the road from here um and he was leading worship there and actually we gave him a relevant 
Jeff yeah, um, Emerson I, I gave I, him a relevant worship album. MVP. Yeah. <laughs> you need a I hope you listen. It's Jeff. If you ever want us to open for you, <laughs> we'll all come work we'll for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. speaking on, on I'm on speaking for a of lot of Monty, other yeah. people yeah. right now, but I'm gar- I almost guarantee yeah. you if you asked, we'd all be yeah. like, yeah, we're all yeah. girls. And he's like super cool dude and did a great job leading worship and uh, like truly has a heart for leading worship and you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you you've talked about your approaching songwriting for the first time. Um you've been leading for basically five to seven years as Mm -hmm. far as like within the kind of the church or whatever. Um, I know, and kind of in the background with relevant and releases, like we're looking towards sometime next year, sort of doing some releases with you, which I, I know that there are a lot of people that are very excited about that. (laughs) Um, what, I I guess what I would say, uh, I know we've talked a little bit about this before, but kind of like when you think about putting out music that's original, who are you hoping to reach through that? Like, is there like a primary person or like an audience that comes to mm-hmm. mind that like that's kind of who you feel like you're writing songs for? Mm, that's so good. Um, yes, I really feel called and believe the Lord has called me to this generation. Um, both like people who are a little bit older than me and a little bit younger than me. Um, I feel kind of like smack in the middle of the people group that I'm called to. Um, and like so much has happened in the last four years or three years Mm -hmm. and it's kind of overwhelming and i've seen so many people including myself that have like lost so much hope um and like we obviously know that the world is just going to keep getting worse Mm -hmm. but i mean like hope and encouragement of like no jesus is still on the throne um and like he is still over your life he's over your Mm -hmm. anxiety like anxiety levels are through the roof um like suicide rates are through the roof like so many things that are just like real real life things and so I really pray that my music and the worship the Lord gives me is going to be encouraging and hope instilling to people. Mm. Um, because like there's so much in the world and we don't need any more songs that are just like pushing politics or like anything <laughs> like that or your own agenda. Yeah. But like genuine worship that's like it it really does meet you where it, where it's where you're at because it's scripture. Mm. Um and stuff like that and yeah, so I just I have a heart for this generation. I really want it to impact this generation mm. specifically. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's interesting, right? So, like, I mean, I know we all kind of like when it comes to music, and I'm honestly, I'm just kind of curious about this. So, it just prompted a thought. So, when you think about music and you think about like worship tunes specifically, um, do you ever listen to stuff outside of that? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Like, like outside of like worship music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and like, what's like, music. what's like a couple, what's like a couple good favorites? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Listen, I love country music. Um, <laughs> my favorite is um, Morgan Wallen, Need a Boat. Okay. Listen, I don't like recommend as like a worship leader, but as like, it's not a bad song. It's just a very secular song. <laughs> it's so fun to sing. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. Okay. I think if I could... I feel like, did he cancel a tour recently or something like that? Probably. From not wanting to deal with a bunch of like... Probably. Like, yeah. I think, yeah. I, I think I saw something yeah, about probably. that. probably. That's a really good song. One of my favorites to sing. How is, old is he? He's younger, right? I think he's like 24. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it is who I was yeah. thinking about. Yeah. 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 So that's a great song. Um, I love a good country song if i i think i add accidentally a little bit of country twang into my worship style no <laughs> no it fits right in with just southern gospel yeah, it's southern yeah, gospel yeah. So, that's that's the difference yeah. between gospel and southern gospel it's just yeah a little twang a yeah. little twang yeah, love, <laughs> love country music listen to that all the time mm. yeah when you think about like your mentors and like mm. you were talking about like learning from your team and stuff what do you feel is a valuable lesson um you've learned recently from um, that's such a good question one of us that's a great question <laughs> one of um, us. <laughs> <laughs> i think there's two that stand out um one was i was learning how to play guitar and chelsea's giving me lessons and listen it's so humbling to go back and watch old videos just do it it's so humbling but like and, but like when you're in a good mood yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> not when you're feeling bad yeah, it's not really not when you're bad. already low yeah, okay. <laughs> But um, she was teaching me how to play guitar, and I remember I was playing King of My Heart, and I memorized the chords. There's four chords, y'all. Same four chords the whole time. And I asked Chelsea, I was like, okay, when will I know that I'll be ready to play like on stage? And she goes, Kensley, she looks me dead in the eyes. You'll never be ready. And I was like, whoa, I was like, that's so <laughs> discouraging. Why would you say that? But then I learned that she's so right. Like, you're never going to feel like completely ready for the calling the Lord has in your life. Mm-hmm. And like, you're always going to, in some way, feel like 
not adequate or like lord like i don't have the strength for this or how in the world are you going to make this happen but like that's when you like lean on not your own understanding by the lord Hmm. um i remember i nervous cried that that sunday (laughs) it it always happens but were we all there it was at youth okay so i don't think you guys were there you might have no i don't think you were there yet um but yeah i yeah fun fact if i get really nervous and feel like i'm supposed to be called to something on nervous cry um so that was a really big lesson that i learned um and then recently it's been a, like a learning lesson of like walk into a room um always ready to learn something um because someone really does know something that you don't mm. um and like i learned so many, you have so many fun facts shaylin like they're amazing and you like throw them out there and it's never in like i know more than you prideful way it's like hey this will benefit you and it always does oh, thank and you. like becca like your heart for worship like stuns me i'm like oh my goodness i don't know if that was a good one to use, but it's stu- it's stu- it stuns me. <laughs> I hope that's not a good one now. No, I, I meant that's a good no. thing. But like your heart for worship and your heart for the Lord is like so impactful. And like people are like are attracted to that. And Billy, oh, I hit your mic. Your, You're okay. your heart to like encourage people and to like spur them on in like the things the Lord's called you to. Um, and Chelsea is really good about like pulling out specific like gifts in people and like being like, you have this, run with it, you know? Mm. And so I think like knowing that people have something to teach you like you don't know everything. That's yeah. such a humbling thing. And it's like super hard to do because you walk in the room like I have all this, you know? And yeah. so that's been a lesson I've been learning recently. Yeah. Too. I mean, I think just in listening to you talk about it, like I don't personally, I don't feel like, uh, I think that we probably all kind of feel this way. I don't necessarily think anybody's like necessarily like I wasn't trying to hyper teach anything or whatever, you know, yeah. like in that moment. But I think you just kind of highlighted this idea of what it's like to kind of be a sponge. Yeah. Right. Like you just mm-hmm. absorb as much as you can from people around you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a really critical thing, whether you're talking about being a musician mm-hmm. or being a songwriter. I, I've talked to you about this and I, I said this on a couple of weeks ago. I really feel like for me, songwriting really just came from being around songwriters for like mm-hmm. six years yeah. straight. I didn't ask yeah. questions. I think I tried to co-write like one or two. Mm. But it's literally like uh, like learning by immersion yeah. of just like I just was in and around it, just like a yeah. language. And after six years, when I started trying, all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm not half bad. At this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think that you certainly have that same sort of quality when it comes to uh, lead and worship specifically mm-hmm. um, it being in and around leaders for that long. Mm-hmm. I think definitely. The people I think about the people that I was around when I was coming up and like I look back and I'm like, that makes perfect sense. They yeah. were all like super hyper tech guys. Yeah. I was in and around my dad running sound my whole life, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I was yeah. literally like uh like uh like the hair kids, like Josh's kids, like running around in the balconies yeah. while band practice so is going cute. on. That was me yeah. and my sisters. Yeah. That's um great. and I I remember that growing up. So mm-hmm. I think there's a lot to be learned from that. Yeah. When it when it comes to playing too, um, that idea of you're not you're really never going to be ready. I, mm-hmm. I think that translates into everything. really everything. Everything. <laughs> like just straight up. And, and and I really only say this not because I, I think it's necessarily like the, the pinnacle of priority, but even if you remove the Lord from the conversation, you're just talking about being a musician. Because mm-hmm. um, I do think that there are going to be people watching this that probably are either not believers or just yeah. musicians. Yeah. I think about the idea of um, like, honestly, just gigging in Charlotte or gigging anywhere. It's like, I never felt ready to start that like ever. Uh, I think about the first times I played on stage. Um, and I, I remember the first time I had to like tremolo pick something. I remember the first time I had to try to finger pick something on acoustic Yeah, and all of them. I was like, I don't know. And (laughs) I remember telling my dad, like, dad, I don't even, I should probably just drop off. Like, I don't think I could do it. Yeah, He was like, you just need to sit and keep Mm -hmm. going. And eventually you just, you're out there. (laughs) Yeah. Luckily for me, all of my early worship leading acoustic playing videos are, they're, they're on film (laughs) available for me to watch at any time. (laughs) And they're the worst. (laughs) Listen, I purposely on the release form didn't put my TikTok handle because there's videos (laughs) of me playing guitar in it that I just i don't really people get on tiktok anymore really i should have said to. that, I say that. <laughs> now especially people will that, find it but they're very humbling <laughs> it's like ching, ching. <laughs> do you have like on piano was there a thing that you felt like was really difficult to kind of yeah. get to the place where you could do it comfortably i think i mean so so my mom was a piano teacher and so i was playing a lot of like classical mm. songs for like recitals and stuff and okay. i never felt ready for that um I think one encouragement that my mom always had is that like 
you're really the only person who's going to notice if you made a mistake unless mm. it's like really bad but the the thing that makes a real a really good musician is someone who's like willing to keep going wow. and like get back on the wow. horse if you yes. make a mistake which is like super tough yeah. but i was talking with a friend of mine the other day and they were kind of talking about feeling insecure about certain parts of like what they feel god has called them to mm. and i was just kind of i was convicted in my own heart that like your weaknesses never really feel smaller mm. the better you get which is kind of what we've been talking about, but it's like what you said earlier, like you rely more on the Lord. And I think we're supposed to not be good enough and we're supposed Mm -hmm. to not feel like we have enough strength or enough talent Mm -hmm. because that's where the Lord fills in the gap. Mm -hmm. So I I think there's something to be said that like, I mean, there's a very real thing, which is, is that if you, the more you do stuff, the more you work at it, the better you'll get. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Now in the context of a worship leader or even just a, like a person you're never going to feel like you're the best and i don't think anyone really is i think that that's that's a caveat that doesn't exist i Mm -hmm. mean there are some really really great instrumentalist singers uh they're all over tiktok Mm -hmm. those are the videos that go viral Mm -hmm. and and like that's (laughs) insanity like it's just crazy and honestly i think um we're all blessed to know some and, and and play alongside some really great musicians or singers or whatever um and I think when I when I think even there's just the people in my own life that I know that are really, really talented at what they do, um, I don't think that any of them feel like they're the best. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like none of them do. Yeah. My favorite thing is actually when on worship fails on Instagram, <laughs> yes. when a famous person oh comes across it, you know, like Corey Every Asbury crap or somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thing. Everyone yep, knew exactly what that was. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. It's not just me. Awesome. <laughs> well, yes. Oh, I love worship fails. <laughs> um. I want to, Becca, you have this question, but I'm going to, uh, I, I want to, before she asks it, I want to go around the room because I think this is oh, specifically yes. for, I don't know if we should do best or worst. What do you think would worst. be best? I feel like, <laughs> wor- okay, worst. Okay, so, so go ahead and ask. Okay, so um, the question is, what is your, we're scrapping best completely? I mean, I do can you, say best. You can you say want. best. We want to hear your best. Yeah, we'll do your best. Worst. We'll all say our worst. <laughs> okay. okay. I have some worst ones too. They're great. Best and or worst experience on stage. Okay. Um, I think I was thinking about this best experience on stage. I like get stage fright. Like every time I get on stage, like it's, it's terrifying. Um, but also like, like we were talking about earlier, it causes you not to rely on your own understanding. But, um, I think when the best is honestly getting to lead worship with people that I do daily life with, um, it's not like whenever I'm up on stage, it's not strangers it's literally people i just ate lunch with or ate dinner or breakfast mm-hmm. whatever it is like it's my family um and so that's caused like the best experience um but there hasn't like been this like moment that i'm like that was the best moment like i think each time leading worship is different and i think the lord has something different to say each time so it's a little bit different um do you want me to share my worst yeah or should I- yeah do it. i love this question do it. <laughs> I have a lot because youth ministry is humbling and <laughs> starting off and it's just humbling. Um, if you aren't a musician, I'm going to do my best to describe this. But I was borrowing Pastor Josh's guitar mm-hmm. this, and it was tuned to open D. So you can strum it without using your hand and it plays a D chord. Okay. I didn't know this at the time. <laughs> so I put a capo on it in capo four, I think, and I was playing G shape. So like I was in the key of G and it was so bad. <laughs> and I was, it was so bad. It did not sound good, but I didn't know it. So I played a full set with it. <laughs> um, and then another time I was spontaneously worshiping and I started singing in the key of D while Chelsea was playing in the key of G. And it was so high and so bad and no one else could sing along. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it barely came out. It was funny. You should try to revisit writing a song, uh, tuning open D, capo four, G <laughs> see, <laughs> see if you can write a song that way now. Like when you reapproach it, when it's not like a, you know, um, terrible moment, <laughs> like you can reapproach it and like yeah. try to find something creative yes. to do with it. There's so many. The what about continues. worse for you? I have, I feel like, my memory has been sanitized because I know there's like you block pull- them out. <laughs> yeah, <gone. laughs> like I just don't even think about it. If it was on video, I delete it. Yeah. So I can't really think of like really a worst like something that could go on worship fail, but I know that there's probably at least a thousand. <laughs> um, but I think this wasn't really terrible. But I was leading worship with you, and I was playing guitar and singing, and both my guitar and my mic went out at the same time. And we didn't oh, realize really? until like afterwards. Is this and a youth thing? No. You know, this was on a Sunday morning. Oh, Everything nice. went wrong that Sunday. It was really bad. Who was running sound? 
Um, it was Jacob. Okay. And calling you out, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't him. I, so now, ever, ever since then, I will like triple check. I will triple check my Josh batteries, goes, even Josh if goes. it's like three batteries. Yeah. <laughs> I Before think... he talks every time, you'll, really? notice. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, know, you'll never not notice it now. <laughs> oh he literally goodness. goes like that to hear if it's on. I think that was a Sunday that my guitar went out too, and it was just the bass playing. <laughs> like he was holding it down. <laughs> I don't think we had keys. I think it was me and you, and I quit playing, and your guitar was out, and it was just bass holding it down. <laughs> That's nice. That was good. Hmm. Bass oh. solo. Yeah. That's funny. Oh, gosh. I... In a similar way, I think I've blocked most of the yeah. ones during from memory. But what's funny about me is My that I actually, I, that's what I'm about to say. <laughs> so I do okay. Once I'm in it, I'm usually good to go. Unless I'm like having like sick or having issues or something like that. But like, I, I don't like to pray out loud and I don't like to greet at all. So anytime I'm asked to do that. I just feel like it's the most <laughs> awkward thing. This happened like last Sunday. It was like two Sundays ago. And I go to greet and Chelsea's laughing and I turn around and I go, why are you laughing at me? Into the mic. And then I turn back around you and realize I did that. Too. I didn't even think about it. And I'm staring at everyone and I go, please stand. <laughs> Let's worship. And then there was years ago, there was one at M- uh, Impact where we used to be too where i <laughs> he played it back for me later because it was on video and this is how i said it i went good morning impact <laughs> please rise i remember laughing it was so for creepy like, sounding probably like 20 minutes because i was like... I was, I was i'm always editing either yeah. either the video or the audio and Those i remember are so hearing cringe it and for me laughing oh forever, to go back and oh, look at it, i'm like Ugh. that was like probably the first time i think you were ever asked to do the greeting that's though. great um so my worst uh and it's funny because I'm always thinking about like what's the best way to share this story, but it would be undeniable for me to not tell this mm-hmm. one. Um, I think I've told at least. I mean, well, you were there. Most people know. I about think this. I may have told yeah. you this. Yeah. Um, but like maybe four or five years ago, we had somebody that was on our team, and they decided that they wanted to sing and they didn't normally sing for the service, and that was always a really. Uh, it was it was sort of like a nobody. I don't think I didn't know this right. So I, um. I have seasons depending on what I'm doing as production director where I'm either playing a lot or mm-hmm. as much as I can or not very much. At this point in time, I think I was playing at least like twice a month or mm-hmm. more. And but I'm but I'm not the worship director, so I don't like do the schedule or pl- pick the songs or anything uh, unless I'm asked to. And so I didn't know that they weren't scheduled. Mm-hmm. I just thought maybe it was a th- you know, like I just thought maybe it was a thing and and I, it I didn't know what to do with it at first, but I'm I'm playing mid-set I got my ears in. I'm trying to remember what song I was leading. And all of a sudden I just I smell breath from from over my shoulder. <laughs> like and I'm like, oh, no. that's weird. Oh, <laughs> and I and I look over and, of and one of our it's one of our one of our members is is leaning over and is like <laughs> trying to share harmony my... like into into my microphone. And I just remember like just trying to figure out what the proper like, response to do in the moment was <laughs> right like part now. of me was like a little frustrated because it wasn't it was just one of those things where where you know i mean they weren't scheduled to do it and yeah. it was kind of one of those tougher moments where you're like okay like but we were mid-set like i mean it was it Don't never happened like... it, it never happened in rehearsal yeah. i was starting to hear it come through my my ears yeah. too like i was starting to hear it monitored back and yeah. i was like oh gosh that's gonna put me off key yeah. um and but then i remember having this sort of like existential thing where i was like don't don't like freak out yeah like i i thought that like like don't freak out. you know there's a part of me that wanted to either be a little frustrated or whatever uh but then i was like don't don't go crazy or mm-hmm. anything like that just like stay calm i don't understand what's happening wh- or why to mm-hmm. me but whatever <laughs> and i remember smelling the breath and, <laughs> so gross. and like i'm yeah. just like okay and then all of a sudden it, it comes over to me i'm like how hilarious does this have to look from the other side of things that's so and funny. i start oh. trying to like make eye contact with my parents who are like out in the crowd somewhere and i'm just like looking for them like, i wonder if anyone's laughing and they told they were cracking oh, up. That's great. they were like and so it was just this weird thing where you know i had to have a conversation after of like hey listen i don't don't do that i don't know what was going on i don't you know was that i i think i asked like was that plan and they were like no i'm like okay well then let's not do that again <laughs> Can we go back? <laughs> um nope. and that was probably like one of my worst 
experiences. The crazy funny. stuff always happens on the Sundays I'm not there. I miss it every it's time. So he comes home, he's like, you will not believe what happened <laughs> to me the jinx. at church. I was like, oh gosh. That's hilarious. I, I did. I have one more that's pretty bad that oh, I've please. told, but it's not, it's not a highlight. It's a highlight for my internship, oh. which is, uh, I, we, way back in the day, um, I was like 17 or 18, I think at the mm. time. And we had two services and I went to, I, 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 basically working night. was working night shift so i was like working night shift on saturday this is this is how my internship concluded mind you <laughs> um so after this i was like i might be a little burnt out um but i uh i went in between first and second service and we had couches in the back we were meeting in a bowling alley we had couches in the back of the bowling alley i went and laid down oh no and i fell asleep oh no because i hadn't slept in like two days a day and a half or whatever at this point he awoke to the and pastor going, no, 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 Billy? no, I, well, I didn't even remember that. I remember I was awake and somebody was moving me towards stage. already. That's funny. Like I, like, I don't even remember being lucid until I was, somebody had already picked me up and was like, it was my dad. Oh my he had like started <laughs> making me walk towards the platform. <laughs> He's and, like, I, what? and I, I'm like dazed, confused. That's funny. I don't remember the song. I throw it as like cotton mouth, Aww. like all of it. I'm just like, oh no. And I remember getting up there and leading and then getting I'm done and back. having a very meaningful conversation <laughs> about <laughs> what it means to be overloaded. That's funny. After that. um, oh, that's great. Okay. So we got to wrap it up, but I got a couple, I got, uh, let's say two more questions okay. here. I want to ask you kind of, if you fast forward, you go five years from now. <laughs> yep. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sound effects included. Um, when, when you fast forward five years from now, what do you hope? Um, both with, with like original music and, and with where you're at in terms of uh, worship leading or, or within the church or whatever you're doing, like what, what do you hope happens in the next five years? Um, What's some goals? My simple answer is that I hope I say yes to the Lord. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I really hope to have something recorded. I think that'd be really cool. Um, but if anything, I think I want to make writing music a part of my ministry. Mm. Um, and as far as like, worship leading goes and like where I want to be I really do I genuinely mean that I really want to just do what the Lord asked me to do so if that means like leading for 5,000 people okay that means leading for five people okay you know okay like but what is. are what are like what's like what would be a really cool moment though a cool moment yeah okay, like what dream... like what are some like I I know I know that like at the end of the day <laughs> like I like know. God's will supersedes everything I, I totally understand and get that <laughs> when you think about it like though what would be something that you'd love to see okay my dream Six, yeah what are some dreams my absolute dream place to lead worship is Red Rocks in I think it's you Arizona Utah I it Arizona I think it's Arizona my dream place I think that would be the coolest or thing Nevada. ever yeah and like i don't know why that's a dream like it's not like the this is the pinnacle of my worship leading it's beautiful like, place it's not it just seems like really cool and i'm like oh my goodness like this is like i have a dream and a vision of seeing like i don't know where it came from if it was an actual dream like in my sleep or if it was just like in prayer but i remember having a vision and there was like an entire stadium of people and they're all on their knees and raising their hands and the stage was like flooded with people getting prayed over and wow. i remember being on stage leading worship for it and I I think that's part of like what I want to see hopefully in five mm-hmm. years. I mean, it, like I said, it doesn't really matter about the people, but in my vision, it was a lot of people. Yeah. So um, I think that would be really cool. Um, and however that looks, getting there. Yeah. Like, let's go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So last last question. Okay. Um, we know you're leading a song. You already kind of mentioned it, yes. Awestruck. Yes. Tell us about this song. Tell us about yeah. kind of what it means to you and uh, tell us... Um, well, I mean, you can also say who's going to be playing with you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'd love to. Um, I'm leading Awestruck by Voo Worship. And this song, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I think I was driving. And I was like, oh, my goodness. This is so good. And it just spoke to my heart, like everything that I've been praying and everything I've been asking the Lord. But the Lord like really does always leave you awestruck. Um, the bridge is really what gets me. Um, it talks about like every season of life. The ebbs and the flows. I didn't know what an ebb was until this song. <laughs> I found out what an ebb is. Did you Google uh, it? <laughs> I, well, I thought I wrote like some random word, but yeah, I definitely did Google it. Um, and then it says like every restless night, like long restless night, like sleep's been rough recently and just like lots of like dreams and things that are not necessarily the greatest, but like knowing the Lord's like in my sleep and even like that kind of stuff. And that song just like really impacted me. And it's one of my favorite like melodies. 
Um, I have Chelsea playing with me today on acoustic mm-hmm. and she is just such an incredible person and has inspired so much and encouraged my heart. Um, and just has been a gift from the Lord. Um, and then I have Danny, who is my roommate and my friend who's coming to play keys, your sister, <laughs> um, is going to be playing keys and she's actually leaving for law school, um, next month, which is really happy, sad. Um, mm-hmm. she's been somebody who's been someone who's been a very healing friend. Um, and if you get a chance to meet her, you, she's one of the greatest friends you'll ever have. Um, so I'm super excited to have them and I'm really grateful that the song was written because it's, it's an incredible song and I hope mm. it impacts people. Yeah. We played it for the first time, maybe what, three weeks ago, yeah. four weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been a fun one. Okay. So at this point, uh, it's kind of interesting the way that we have to do this because, because it's a cover, uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify, you will have to actually transition to our YouTube page, uh, but you can go subscribe do there subscribe. and you'll get to hear it. It's kind of, it boils down to copyright because it's a cover. Um, but we certainly, uh, I, I know even just from the first time you told us about this song, like this, I, I actually, I, like full disclosure, when we were talking about it, I totally guessed you're going to do this song. Like, I was like, gonna do I, was like I, I, I bet you she's going to do Awestruck. Yeah. So um, we kind of, we, we were thinking about it in advance, like what's the best way to do that? And mm-hmm. so if you're on Spotify right now, do us a favor, just go over to our YouTube channel. Do you it. can type in Patterson Recordings. Um, or you can check any of our social medias, and I guarantee you it'll be linked there. Uh, without further ado, um, go check out Kensley Husband's cover of Awestruck by Boo Worship. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye, guys.
Smile on my face 